Hey gang, welcome back to the shop. Bear with me if it's a little noisy in here. I've got both the furnace and my humidifier running over time trying to keep things warm enough and wet enough to work in. And on the bench today we have a National Resophonic Radio Tone guitar in exceptional condition because it's basically brand new. This is one of Alfie Smith's guitars. I do an awful lot of work for Alfie. And uh, it's in here today because we're going to be installing a National slimline pickup here at the end of the neck. Going to be grounding the metal parts and it's time to install a strap button. And in this case the customer doesn't like having the strap button in the heel. He likes it uh, here next to the heel adjacent uh, into the, in the side. So uh, in order to do that safely I have to make a support block that gets glued on the inside of the guitar so that the screw has something to run into and also to dissipate the stress from the, uh, the strap button across the whole width of the side so you don't have a, a point that's prone to cracking. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Hope you can follow along. So I'm going to start off by screwing around a little bit here. You know what's funny? Every time I take the tailpiece off a national guitar, there's always a couple of weird little divots or dings right down at the end there, even on brand new instruments, almost as if it was something that they do at the factory. I, I have no idea what that would be, but they all seem to have it. And then there's a good way to get carpal tunnel, just a whole lot of screws to take off. When we get those off, I'll take off the cover plate and we'll see the cone. And being very careful to remove it from the well. And we'll store it in a safe place so it doesn't get damaged while it's out of the instrument. Hello RTB from 2012, nice work. Here I'm marking and I'll use an awl and drill for the uh, strap button hole. I have to do this carefully. I use a smaller bit than necessary and then work up to the correct size. For the side support I'm using Spanish cedar which is very light and it's also very dimensionally stable which is nice. It doesn't move very much um, with changes of humidity and that's nice. So we'll just cut that off to the correct dimension. It fits in between the lining on the inside of the guitar and I'm making it kind of a pyramid shape because that seems to be the most structurally sound from an engineering standpoint. Spreads the load out over a wide surface. And then I'm very gently scraping the surface uh, that contacts the side slightly hollow because it's curved and uh, that gives a place for the glue to go and it just fits nicely. Just a few thousandths of an inch. I'm going to be using epoxy so I'm protecting the inside of the instrument and the label that's in there. Then we're going to fish in some of this. This is wax dental floss, which goes through the cleat. And you can see I tie on a little bead on the outside that'll provide a stop and, and pull it up tight against the side. Using this little device, this just winds it all up tight. I'm using five minute epoxy. You can use white glue, but this just is faster. Get it in position and hold it tight for a few seconds. And now I'm very carefully marking out the place where I'll be drilling for the uh, pickup lead wire. Same deal. Um, smaller drill than necessary and then size up. We'll get that into position and make sure it's exactly where I want it, centered and everything, up against the fingerboard. Then we'll peel off the adhesive sticky stuff. This is very uh, tenacious tape, so you want to get it right the first time because it's very difficult to reposition it and in older instruments especially you're in danger of pulling off the finish um, if you have to move it around too much. So we'll just get it right up there and uh, make sure the pickup wire is through. Here I'm drilling the jack hole on the other side. This is a quarter inch bit and then I'll finish that off with a reamer so that it's a good fit. Little soldering. The hot goes to the tip. The ground goes to the ring. And then here's the other ground for the cover plate. We'll get that all together and we'll tape the wires in place, leaving enough that I can pull out and uh, resolder the jack if necessary at some future date. And this is the grounding wire which I uh, drilled a hole for through the top of the instrument next to those weird dings. And this gets sandwiched up close by the tailpiece when it gets screwed in. Provides grounding uh, to both the strings and the cover plate because it touches that. So the whole system is grounded. Then we can get it strung up and uh, we can play some low down dirty blues and see how it plays. Mm -hmm. 